guys see that? That is what we're fishing today. A cold, muddy river. 90 minute car ride, not too bad. What's it gonna be today? Spinning or bait casting? We're gonna go bait caster. I'm feeling it. Lock the car up. No idea how safe it is here. We are on the Susquehanna River and I am not sure if I've even ever fished here before. Today is January 2nd and if you saw my last video, you'd know that we had a lot of rain yesterday and I mean a lot. Look at, look how flooded it is here. So what we're targeting today is smallies and whatever else may uh, swim through the Susky, I have no idea. Are you picking up trash? Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Good Samaritan right there, guys. Coming out, picking up a bag of trash. Respect. All right, first things first, we need to check the water temperature. 45 degrees or higher. I'm gonna be real, whoa, <laughs> what the heck? I almost dropped my rod in the water. Haven't used this real, oh, nice. My settings aren't set. All right, fingers crossed. What do we got? Show me that good water temp. Warm rain yesterday, 45 exactly. I don't know if you guys can see that. Literally 45 degrees on the dot. <sighs> what to use, what to use. 45 degrees muddy river for smallies. Could use a bright jerk bait, but I'm a little worried about getting snagged right off the bat. I could start with a small spinner bait cover some water. We'll start spinner bait. We gotta start something. I have no idea what's going on here, but we gotta start somewhere, right? Small mouth, hopefully. I mean, it's pretty muddy and flooded, so it's not looking too good. But you don't know unless you try, right? That's true. You fish around here? Yeah. So I, this is my first time fishing here. What would it be my best bet to catch fish today? Well, I usually don't fish this time of year. But, you know, right. I put my boat away. Like okay. That. It's tough in here, because this is usually, if the water wasn't high, there'd be a foot of water out here. Yeah, okay, gotcha. It'd only be a foot. It, it, it's a mud flat. Yeah, okay. In okay. spring of the year, it's real good, because the bass yeah. are coming up here. Right. Oh, and thank you for that information, because uh, I was going to head up this tributary, but I don't, no, I don't yeah, think, getting up here. yeah. All right, well, I guess we'll walk a little bit up the tributary, even though it's not ideal. If we don't make anything happen, then we'll make a move. What fishing is all about exploring having fun i mean right here look at this got a nice wall right here to break up the current you know there could be a there could be a giant muskie right here you never know until you actually fish it what you might catch that's the beauty of fishing you know what before i start driving somewhere else i'm gonna try to walk up this bridge towards that bank because look at that cut it completely stops the current i just have a feeling that something might be over there let's go check it out you guys see what I'm talking about? I'm saying I'm gonna fish on the bank over there and the water, the current kind of curves around that edge right there and then there's just no current right by those trees, completely still. I mean, if I was a smallie, I'd wanna hang out over there. The question is, can we even get down there? And the answer is probably gonna be no. Yeah, ain't no way we're getting down here unless I brought a machete and a chainsaw. Come on. Yeah, I was feeling so good about that plan. Oh, hold on a second. Here we go. That's me, baby. All right. This ain't gonna be easy, but it's doable. Once we're actually down here, it does not look too bad. Look how still and calm this water is. In the winter, fish do not want to expend a lot of energy. This actually looks perfect for like, just flipping a little finesse jig in here and just working it real slow. But we're gonna keep throwing the spinner bait for 10, 15 more minutes, walk along the bank as far as we can. And on the way back up, I'm gonna flip a jig in here. I'm, I actually feel pretty good about this. Oh, 
the musky! Guys! Frickin' you saw it! What the fuck? Oh, whoa! My god! Oh, okay, calm down, calm down, come back. I don't think I'm gonna get him. I set the hook! How did he, he got frick? He got frickin' stuck on the bridge! Guys! Did I freaking tell you? that dog? I'm excited. Look, I started over there. I came right here. Did I tell you? Did I tell you guys? Did I freaking tell you? Holy pajizo. Did I tell you I had a good feeling about over here? Did I or did I not? The fish had 10,000 casts. I probably made less than 100 today. I can't believe it, guys. I cannot freaking believe it. I set the hook hard, too. I got, let me check the hooks on this bait. I'm probably not gonna catch anything for the rest of today, and you know what? Even if I don't catch another, even one, even if I don't catch another fish, I will not be upset because I came out here first time, looked on Google Maps, spent about two hours researching different spots, and I decided on this spot. Met a nice angler, got good information, and I mean, hooking into a muskie January second after flooded conditions like this—that's pretty good. So this video might not be the most most quality fish catching video, but we made a plan, we had an adventure, and we got some results. What more can you want? Man, catching and losing a fish like that, that is exactly what, oh no, my spinnerbait. Oh, it broke off. <laughs> fish like that, that make you want to go out every single day and just keep casting for hours on end, even if you know that there's not a good chance of catching anything, you just want to do it. All right, well, my spinnerbait broke off, but not the end of the world. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna upgrade my leader. I don't have any steel leader with me, but I have a 12 pound fluorocarbon leader. I'm gonna upgrade to my heaviest line that I have with me, 15 pound fluorocarbon leader. I'm gonna put a giant spinnerbait on and we're gonna go for musky number two. We need a musky spinnerbait. I'm gonna go with one of the big double Colorado blade thumpers. I'm gonna go with this guy. This guy's a badass looking spinnerbait. Look at that. I'm feeling good about this. So I've gotten one bite. My next muskie it will probably take about 10,000 casts, but I think I might have enough time today to do it. We'll see. Reset the cast counter. Here's cast number one. This bait feels really good. I wonder how many muskies are in here. Oh, oh, wait a second. That same group of minnows is still here. What, guys, I don't know what type of muskie that is. As long as it's not a tiger muskie, I don't know when they spawn. Maybe that muskie had spawned and is protecting his fry. That's possible, right? Comment below. The win I mean, today is January 2nd, water temp 45 degrees. Is this one muskie spawn? I have no, I have no freaking clue. All uh, right, keep moving. I'll come back. Maybe that muskie will come back later. Probably not, but if it's guarding fry, it'll stay there forever. Whoa, shit. Yeah, I need a freaking walking cane. This guy might be an ideal walking stick. If you guys are ever hiking somewhere... All right, that's not gonna do it. Well, if you guys are ever hiking somewhere and it's very dangerous, wet, slippery, treacherous, unstable, like where I am now, uh, I need a walking stick. Come on. Right here, maybe. Right here, maybe. Oh, sheesh. Let's see if this guy's strong enough to withstand a little bit of pressure. Hey, this guy will do it. Let's just shorten him up a little bit. Karate kick. Woo. There's your walking stick. Gotta move on. Nice obstacles here. Am I fishing or am I running an obstacle course? Interesting. As I'm moving farther down, this current's getting quite strong. This is unfishable. There's no point fishing, it's too fast. Let's just go over there, cast for a couple hours straight and see what happens. Huh? Is that a fish right there? What the f was that? I felt like something chased it. Oh! Oh! What is that? What is that? I knew something. Oh, Smalley. Oh. Okay, okay. Calm down, guys. Just a Smalley. No big deal. Three pound Smalley. Who gives a crap? I saw. Remember, I just, I just saw something bump it. That's a nice Smalley. I mean, oh, God dang it. I should have landed it. I was screwing around too much. That was a three pound small, probably about two and a half to three pounds. Usually I'd be stoked to catch that smallie this time of year, but I want that muskie that I caught, no joke, was over three feet long. 
easily in that 36 to 40, 40 inch range, somewhere in that range for sure. I've caught a lot of muskies, I know. This is a spot. You got the current coming, it, bend, it bends around all the way out there, but then this area right here, completely still, completely calm. Yeah, I mean, you got the minnows there, you got the bait fish, so it's not surprising to see a couple predatory fish over here. All I'm doing is I'm just trying to cast under these branches, and look, I'm just literally just reeling it as slow as I can, trying to bump into as much stuff as I can, keeping those blades turning. Nothing special. I'm just gonna keep using this bait till I'm done fishing. I'm not gonna switch. Yeah, this visibility, this water is so stained and flooded. The river, the guy told me the river is up seven feet. The visibility, man. Visibility, maybe four inch, maybe, maybe six inches was more like four inches. Really, really low visibility. And that's why I'm using this uh, giant double blade Colorado spinnerbait, just producing a bunch of thump, a bunch of vibra vibration, nice and slow, and just letting these fish hone in on it. This is like basic river strategy. Fishing an area, a fast river, finding an area with no current. The fish hang out here, they rest, they feed, then they might go back out there for a little bit, but they, they won't go back out there for long. They will look for areas with little to no current. Water's not that cold yet. There's no need for the fish to go deep quite yet, in my opinion. You should be able to find some fish shallow this time of year. I mean, you can find fish shallow any time of the year, but when the water gets real cold, you'll start finding less and less. They'll come up to feed in short periods of time up shallow, but when the, when the water is real cold, that's when you want to really start fishing deep. But for a bank angler, you don't always get that luxury. Got to make do with what you got. Um, by the way, guys, if you're ever going to be fishing flooded wood, like what I'm doing right now, bumping into stuff, oh, I almost got snagged. Always use a spinnerbait and not a chatterbait. Not a chatterbait. Spinnerbait, it'll be uh, swimming through the water like this. You hit a, you hit a log, you hit a, you hit a stump, whatever. It hits it, deflects off the safety pin, then the hooks stay away from the uh, whatever obstruction there is. You won't get snagged. Chatterbaits will get snagged on wood and all kinds of stuff. And if you're on the bank, then you probably won't be able to get your bait back. A lot of times I prefer a chatterbait, but this is one of the situations where... Oh, wait, I got it snagged. Wow, that is interest. Oh, I got it off. I was gonna say that would have been interesting timing for me to, t oh, oh my God. Oh, I got my bait back. What the hell? Dude, I am, I was gonna say, I was probably gonna get skunked today, but after catching this, I'm gonna have to say, this was not a skunk. I am still skunkless in 2019.